So for the past few months, I've been putting the Fujifilm X-H2 through its paces. I've been allowed to take it with me to jobs, use it for personal work, record things on YouTube, whatever I can do to use it in a real life situation so that I could create a review just like this. Now, Fujifilm didn't exchange any money or any gifts during this time, and at no point were they even allowed to see this video before I posted it. And they didn't need to because this is a fantastic and amazing camera with a couple little quirks here and there. But this is honestly one of my favorite experiences coming from a Fujifilm camera. The X-H line as a whole might just be my favorite lineup whenever it comes to just getting the damn job done. So my channel isn't one that gives you fluff. It doesn't give you a whole bunch of different little B-roll shots and sexy looks into the camera. You already know what the camera body looks like. You're pretty aware of what the specs are and what it can do. I wanna tell you what my real world experiences are and I'll show you some of my uh, examples from work while we go along through this. Let's talk about the resolution and the 40 megapixels in that sensor. Now it is a 40 megapixel sensor, but I think the issue is we have so many people that align themselves with Fujifilm and they fanboy at it that they've started saying a lot of things that were very, I'll put it as over embellished. Um, the way they talked about the cropping power that you get out of this and the resolution and detail you're getting out of this camera, uh, saying that it's two, three times better than an X-T4 or an X-T4, any kind of former um, X-Trans 4 generation uh, camera. The way they talked about it, even the way they talked about you can punch in two, three times more, that's not true. I took a lot of photos against an X-T4 and the X-H2 and even an X-E4 and an X-H2, which again, same exact sensor on the X-T4 and X-E4, so no problem. But the results were great from the X-H2, but they didn't blow the X-E4 or X-T4 out of the water. When it comes to cropping power, I love the way someone commented down below on a former video about it. It's not like we're getting a 200% you know, increase in cropping resolution. The, the increase is more like 124%, so about a 24% cropping power increase, which is great for a lot of people, but the way that it's been discussed is that it's going to save your photos if you're a wedding photographer or a street photographer and you got to crop in, you know, basically what would be the effective focal length of another, uh, you know, 15 to 20 millimeters. You're going to have the same deterioration that you would in your other photo show up in your X-H2 photo. Um, and I think the thing that people really need to understand is, yes, you're going to have more megapixels to be able to play with if you're cropping in that much. Maybe your image doesn't deteriorate to a uh, 16 megapixel, but to a 20 megapixel. But whenever it comes to megapixels together and printing, there's a big difference. Uh, there's a big um, discrepancy between that and just looking at something digital or making small prints. A lot of you guys, if you're printing out just eight by tens for your wedding photography or for yourself, I print out 18, eight by tens, 11 by 14s even, I print those out. Um, you're not really going to see a difference, honestly, between the two, even whenever you're cropping in type. Now, again, if you're thinking on the X-H2 that you can crop in three, 400%, um, and that the image is gonna look good, you're not, because you're gonna run out of resolution for even an 11 by 14. But if you're doing a nice little tight crop, maybe fixing up the edges, maybe about five, six millimeters in focal length is what you're cropping out, basically like the effect of focal length you're creating, uh, you're not going to see a huge difference, honestly, between the two, you're not. Now, a lot of people also will bring up, well, what about with large prints? What about with large prints? Well, again, I'll bring this up. Up to a 30 by 40, a 26 megapixel sensor will, will print at 300 DPI, just like a 40 megapixel sensor. And just to bring it up, because a lot of you guys keep saying, well, what about a 30 by 40? What about large prints? Okay, a 30 by 40, here's 30. Okay, that, that covers up all of my body. That is the... That is the short end of what you're saying you're printing. It, it, it further than this ruler, this yardstick, which doesn't even fit in there. I wanna see which one of you have printed that big to where I'm getting that example because it just, it doesn't fit. It, it, do, it doesn't make sense. And even then, if you're printing this large, you can still print a 30 by 40 with a 26 megapixel sensor. It will make there at 300 DPI, which is for a lot of people from the early 2000s to now, that is your industry standard for prints. But even more, how many people have printed this big? This is a 20 by 26 print. I took this on an XE3 with a 35 millimeter 1.4 in Hawaii at about maybe F11. And it looks fantastic. There is so much detail in this. And honestly, this is a somewhat cropped image. I had to do uh, 
you know, auto adjusts for the warp or whatever it is for the lens. I forgot what it's called, but you understand I had to level the horizon, all that stuff. Yeah, this, this is an edited, altered, cropped in image at 24 megapixels and it did just fine for 20 by 26. If I was to print this exact same print with the X-H2, would I be able to see a little bit more, you know, of the image whenever I'm looking up this close? Yeah, I would be able to definitely see a little bit more detail. But the issue is when I'm looking at it at the correct, you know, distance from me so that I can see the whole thing, it's not the same. And I think part of it is because a lot of people have never had any of their work in a gallery or they've never printed their own work or hung their work up, um, that people don't understand that we don't walk straight up and, and stare at an image like this um, whenever it's printed the same way you crop, you crop in and zoom in and stare at an image like this on your computer, which is one of the reasons why I think pixel peeping is one of the dumbest things to do and why the megapixel race doesn't make any damn sense. And again, I like high resolution uh, photos. I love more megapixels uh, for, for some things, that's great. But I think a lot of people really are buying into the X-T5 and buying into the X-H2 and they have a placebo effect of how great it is or they just you know, wanna say all the right buzzwords and they're given more credit to the sensor than needs to be given. It's not going to save your photography. It's not going to save your wedding photography. If you don't compose correctly and you don't have everything fixed up correctly the way it's supposed to, it's still gonna look bad. Are there instances where, yeah, I, I'm glad I have that extra resolution because I'll be able to crop in a little bit more? Yeah, they are, they are there, it, it is a real thing. But listen, this isn't going to save a completely screwed up photo. Or if someone is, you know, you take a photo of, of, a, of a group or a couple with a 21 millimeter lens and oh shit, you know what? I wanna make it look like a 50. Cropping into that, it's gonna fall apart the same way that an X-T4 would. And even though it might do a little bit better for most of the way, you're not gonna see a difference if you were to print out those two kind of crops side by side to where it's drastic. And the other thing is whenever you're just talking about sharpness and detail, um, everyone says, oh my gosh, you get so much more detail, so much more sharpness. Uh, there's, not a there's not a difference uh, between the former X-Trans 4 generation and the X-Trans 5 generation. It it's not a big difference. Um, I didn't really see a difference. It's sharp, it's still sharp, but it doesn't blow anything out of the water. And again, this is because of how damn good Fujifilm is. I mean, honestly, Fujifilm did such a great job on their former iteration that even with 40 megapixels, like you're getting that, but they didn't really improve on anything. And it's not to say that's bad, it's to say that, damn, they did a really good job to be able to transition to 40 megapixels and still keep that amount of detail and sharpness. That's great, but it's not a two to three time jump like so many people were saying. And I just wanna clear that up. So now we're gonna move on to the other parts about this and I'll make this quick because honestly, you just need the cold hard facts. You just need the details. You don't need me to give you fluff. You don't need me to make excuses for the camera. First off, the autofocus on this camera is very, very good. Um, I would say it does act a little bit better than the X-T4s. Um, the algorithm has done a fantastic job, especially with faces in groups of being able to uh, pick out the correct face. I mean, it just does a really good job. The only thing though is never you're in a high burst rate of shooting, let's say the 15 frames per second mode. Uh, if you're on continuous tracking or if you are moving your point and you're following someone on, on single point focus, maybe back button, button auto focus. Uh, the only issue that I've had is if you're moving too quickly or if your subject moves too quick, uh, the camera actually slows down the shutter and maybe doesn't get to that 15 frames per second, but then it'll speed back up once things are standing still. So that's good. Um, but you know, there is that little bit of lag whenever it comes to it. But whenever it comes to video, it was fantastic. It always hit the right person, never had any issues with it. I got to give my, uh, you know, tip my hat to Fujifilm for that. The algorithm in the X-H2 and the new processor, it's kicking ass. Touching base in that high burst uh, photo mode, the 15 frames per second is fantastic. It does work well. The CF Express Type B card actually does take care of business. Now, when you go to that mode, it does tell you that it's equivalent to 13 frames per second when it's electronic, which to me basically means that it's just a 13 frame per second burst. Um, but I'm guessing that may defer on if subjects are moving or not, I don't know. But yeah, the 15 frame per second burst in mechanical was fantastic. It did what it's supposed to do. I could literally take photos for about three to four seconds um, and just keep on bursting before that buffer actually filled up shooting RAW plus JPEG. The CF Express Type B card does wonders for that. And it only took about maybe one to two seconds for the buffer to actually clear. So 
I don't assume the buffer is going to fill up and it's going to give you any issues. The issue for me is that is a large file with raw as well as a large file with the JPEGs even bigger now to have to upload all those and call those in your computer. You're taking up a lot of file space. If you're shooting something like weddings though, I got to admit this is going to be perfect. Wedding photographers, you're not sitting there spraying and praying. You are having to be very intentional about every photo that you take, but it's nice to be able to have a camera that can burst through a scene like a first kiss or something that's happening like uh, maybe you have a sparkler. You're going to be able to spray as long as you need to to be able to make sure you get the shot, which is a big bonus for a lot of you. Uh, whenever it comes to electronic shutter, I, I wouldn't use it. It comes with the 1.29 crop, but even more than that, this isn't equipped with a stack sensor. So you're still going to have stuff like rolling shutter and warp, especially when you're moving side to side, especially for doing sports. Even in weddings, I would just stay away from electronic shutter, especially because the shutter in the X-H2 is so damn quiet and amazing. Um, I can't hear it unless I'm behind the camera taking the photo. When it comes to the video, video is amazing. The autofocus of video is fantastic. F-Log2 is one of the, uh, you know, the shining stars, I think, of the whole camera. Uh, it just does a great job. Whether it's in 8K, 4K, whatever, you're gonna see this in 1080p. Uh, I'm a huge 1080p fan, especially because it doesn't fill up as much space on final exports, but I just gotta give it to it. Uh, Fujifilm did a fantastic job whenever it came to video on this camera, the X-H2S. The amount of technology fit into this, the autofocus is still amazing, it's still gonna hit, it's still getting who you need to get every single time whenever you're prioritizing where it needs to focus. So there are multiple subjects in the shot the Fujifilm algorithm is going to take care of it. And even more than that, the colors coming out of this. And of course the dynamic range in F-Log2, chef's kiss, perfect, um, amazing. I'm not going to, going to go into any more detail about that because I don't feel like I'm 100% equipped to do it. I don't want to give any false misleading information, but I'm sure you can find a whole bunch of videos. But listen, it is amazing considered picking up this camera specifically just for the F-Log2. When it comes to weight, ergonomics, EVF, things that also make it better. Um, EVF is fantastic. The weight honestly isn't that heavy at all. This is a camera that I was able to carry around uh, with a 23F2 for a while. I mean, I didn't really have any trouble carrying this camera around, especially shooting stuff for work. Uh, it felt great. I didn't feel like it was hurting my neck or my shoulders whenever I had it over me. Didn't have a battery grip, but honestly, the battery on the new Fujifilm cameras are so good, I don't even feel like I need a battery grip on a lot of these cameras anymore. Now, the only thing about this camera that kind of makes me, you know, hesitant to really recommend it to every single person is it because the price isn't bad. The price is really, really good, which is one of the reasons why this is a major, major, major go. Shout out to my boy, Flossie Carter. But the thing is that for a little bit money, $300 less, you can get an X-T5, which maybe doesn't have all the bells and whistles like a CF Express Type B or the 8K uh, recording. But to be honest with you, a lot of people aren't recording 8K. Your eyes can't even really decipher what 8K is and screens haven't really caught up to 8K and I'm not sure they will anytime soon because manufacturers are still making money off 4K. Your phone usually doesn't put out 4K unless you're watching on a Sony phone. So there's a lot of limitations for the way that we consume a lot of the media um, that these cameras are built for. And because of that, if you're someone who is shooting videos and you're already gonna use an Atomos Ninja um, 5, uh, you're maybe someone taking photos and you just need to shoot portraits or stills, you're shooting weddings and things like that. The X-T5 is identical in performance, number one. And number two, it's going to check all the boxes for you, save for that bigger grip, the dedicated ISO and record button, things that are aesthetic and maybe the 8K recording. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought down below in the comments, if you agree, disagree. And if you don't like it, remember to share this video with everyone that you don't uh, like me with and to have them watch it and leave comments and thumbs down as well. Uh, it really hurts me in the algorithm. So with all that being said, take it light, but take it, have a good one.